I've grown up in the environment of dance. Um, my mom, my mother, her name is Viji Prakash. She was performing actively before I was born and even while she was pregnant with me. And once she had me, she continued to tour. Um, and she started a dance school before I was born. So the environment that I was born into was filled with dance, filled with music. And so it's kind of the first memory that I have. Um, and just seeing my mom, like her life was dance. I mean, she was always in class, always in rehearsal, always performing. So like that's, that was the first thing I remember is dancing. And like I was in love with it like since I was a kid, you know? So, um, so yeah, dance has always been part of my life and also a big part of how I identify myself. Like, for me, it's a language. So yeah, my mom was my first teacher, and, um, and she was really a role model, because I would see, like, I saw dance through her, and so, um, so watching her, I thought, I want to be a dancer. Um, but also, I mean, the mother-daughter relationship as a teacher-student relationship is very difficult because we fought a lot, you know. It's naturally the kind of um, respect that you show a teacher when there's the mother-daughter comfort. There's Sometimes that respect is not as obvious as it should be. So we fought a lot, but, um, but I mean, there's something very special about having somebody you live with. Like, there's a certain kind of osmosis that is passed is pass through, and also watching her teach other people. So watching students learn, I learned a lot from watching other people learn dance. Um, and then in, a, I think about 10 years ago, no, before that actually, my mom would bring a lot of dancers to teach workshops in our school. So I, that was also really good for me in terms of like broadening my perspective on dance. I got to learn with several, several gurus. Um, and so that kind of, have, giving exposure to other artists was very helpful to me. Um, about 10 years ago, I um, came under the guidance of Malavika Sarukai, who's you know one of the most renowned Bharatanatyam soloists, and that has been a completely like eye-opening experience for me because she has just like really, really, really studied the art of solo Bharatanatyam on herself, on her body, in terms of performance, in terms of exploring various concepts and sort of broadening the Bharatanatyam repertoire, and um, the way she communicates. Um, you know, body technique, um, um, energy that you're working with around you, within you, the way your mind thinks, um, the way you must bring a freshness to every moment, not just do something out of habit. Um, I've just learned so much in the last 10 years, even in terms of choreography. I show her my choreography and we really work through it. She asks me a lot of questions, you know, and really like probes me. So I'm forced to kind of rethink and reanalyze my work. And um, so I've just learned so much. Um, from her. Yeah. Solo full length uh, production that I choreographed was called Stri Kata. That was actually the first performance that I did in Singapore. And it was sort of reinterpreting the stories of three women from the Ramayana um, Kaikai, Shurpanaka, and Sita. And, um, and since then, I've done various other solo and group productions. But I think one thing that sort of links everything that I've done. Actually, it probably changed. At first, it was very much about mythology because so much of we, what we grow up with are these stories and interpreting that sto those stories. And the way that we're told stories by our grandparents and our parents are different than we think of them as like a present generation, um, you know, Indian American. And so a lot of questioning of those stories were, were what made me interpret my dance in a different way. Um, then after a point, um, for me, the spiritual aspect has become um, very, um, very like magnetic. Like I'm drawn to the spiritual aspect because I feel like um, on a day-to-day -day basis, they're not things that you can express. Whereas in the dance language, um, that inherent kind of spirituality and like otherness comes forth. I mean, it, it's a, it's a language that is so easily. Um, prone to that, you know, this like ethereal quality. Um, and to me, that's an important part of my life. It's an important part of my meditation practice. And so dance has sort of become an extension of that. Um, the last solo piece that I did 
that I actually performed in Singapore last year, then um, kind of became a cathartic extension of my life experience. So within the same year, my child, my father passed away, my child was born. And so um, I created a production called Juala, which was about the flame, which um, is simultaneously about burning and illuminating, about death and life, about, you know, um, cremation and celebration, you know, it's just so many dualities that are represented by one flame and I felt, uh, by one symbol, and I felt like that sort of communicated the experiences that I had been through. Um, and so I feel like dance is, kind of, my expression in dance has sort of been through a lot of different patterns, I guess, and continues to move in those. So yeah, Mara is I don't think, I mean, I have never heard of a production done on Mara. Um, Mara is usually a character from Buddhist folklore. Like when people hear Mara, they think of the character who is enticing Buddha when he's under the Bodhi tree. And that's how Aditya and I both knew the character. But when we read a book by Deepak Chopra about the story of Buddha, this character Mara was in it throughout, not just when he's meditating. It was there from his birth, throughout his life. And so when we read that, we felt like immediately for both of us, we said Mara is the mind and Mara is within everybody. And, um, and the more we thought about it, we kind of observed that personality, you know, that like kind of cunning, tricky, mischievous um, character. We started observing that our mind is that character. And so that's the production that we've created. Um, we've created a character named Jiva, who is essentially everybody, you know, we refer to the individual as Jiva. And Mara sort of creates this world that Jiva experiences. Um, it's also in Advaitic philosophy, uh, we believe that everything that you experience, the world that you live in, is a projection of your own mind. So that mind is Mara, so Mara is this like director that kind of creates, you know, the things we see, the things we experience with our senses, the people, the relationships, everything is an extension of our own mind. So that's what this production is about. And, um, and we just want, in sharing this with our audience, we want people to feel like it tells their story. And so what happens a lot of times in, like, in Indian culture, Indian dance and music, is that there's so much symbolism. You know, like Shiva has so much symbolism behind him. He's not just a dancing god. Devi has, there's so much to her. Krishna, you know, Sajaswati, everybody has like so many layers. But because they themselves are so beautiful, like in terms of the artistry, the images, the, you know, the lyrics and all that stuff, then sometimes we forget what they stand for. So in doing Mara, we just really wanted to go to the essence of the message which is to say, our mind creates the world we live in. What goes beyond that? What is, what is that that exists beyond that? And can we ever find that? That's basically the message of Mara. It's been a, it's been a, really, um, it's been a really nice experience, I think, for us to see. So far, we've only done Mara twice. And they've been with our dancers and our musicians that we're used to um, in Los Angeles. And so for this experience, we've worked, we're working with dancers from Singapore, dancers from India, musicians from India, tech team from Singapore. And so there's so many different people coming together for this show, which is also what makes it special and unique. Um, and I think that what's, what's nice about that is seeing how the movement and the choreography translates on bodies that have never done this before. And that makes it a challenge because we had very limited time for rehearsal. It's not like we live here and we're rehearsing every day. We had a very short period in December and now we're here four days before the show. So it's a challenge, but because it's a challenge, it's even more rewarding when we see how it comes together. It was a very small role, my role in Life of Pi. And um, it just happened because I was um, I was on the set helping a friend who was the choreo choreographer for the, uh, the movie. And so when I was there, I met Ang Lee and he needed somebody to play the wife of Pi. So he had asked me to play that role. Um, it was very short, but it was many days of filming. So I had the opportunity to watch how that process goes, watch how he works, watch how actors like Irfan Khan, you know, do their role and do their part and so it was a it was a learning experience for me to see how me, how uh, movies are different from you know stage performance and also in to see how things are directed because when you're a choreographer it's very similar to directing in a different way but so it was it was i think a big learning experience for me so. i think 
think it's important to both give them some information so they have a context, they have some idea of what's going on, but I think it's also important for them to have to interpret themselves. So if we tell them everything, now this is happening, now this is happening, now this is happening, it's like um, force feeding them and, and creates this kind of passive viewing. You know, when you're given all this information, you don't have to invest your own imagination and your own creativity. So I think there's kind of a middle ground, and that's what I try to, or I'm trying to, with my work from here onwards, is to find that middle ground of how to communicate the context and the essence, and then have them meet me halfway to understand the piece. Um, so what I would say to younger people is not to focus on the externalities, not to focus on the attention of performance, um, not to focus on you know social media and what to post and how you appear to the public, but to focus on your inner journey. I think we're losing that because there's so much external attention given to superficial things. So that's what I, I would like to do with myself and I, what I would like to, you know, if I had to give advice to younger people, I'd say go inside, not out. We hope to see you all at Mara um, on March 24th, Saturday at 8 p.m. at the Esplanade Theater. Mara, the mastermind at Esplanade Theatre.